Hi everyone, welcome to Lola's Frugal Life. This is episode number 279. Today we're gonna be talking about managing your money with intentional living. So please stick around for a few quick words from our sponsor and we'll get right into the show. So today I wanted to talk about how important it is to manage your money through intentional living. So as I'm sure you know, intentional living is basically just living on purpose. When we do something with intention, we're doing it deliberately. You know, you make choices that are in alignment with what you value most, and you make decisions with your goals and what you want out of life in mind. So with managing our money um, intentionally, it just means that you deliberately decide where your money will go. And it takes work to be intentional and make sure that your money goes where you want it to go, but it makes such a big difference and allows you to live a better life. And it also allows you to make the most of what you have. When you take control of your money, you can greatly improve your financial situation because you get to determine where your money goes instead of just letting it happen and not really knowing where your money went. When you make purposeful decisions about your money, your stress level as it relates to money will go down because um, uncertainty about your finances causes stress and when you're intentional with your money, you remove that uncertainty. I know, I remember, I used to always be stressed out with even the smallest purchases because I wasn't really managing my money. I wasn't tracking my expenses and I had no idea kind of like where was this money coming from. So every time I made a purchase, I always was like, uh, like how's this all gonna add up at the end of the week? And you know, it's just, There's just a difference in how you feel about making purchases when you're actually um, being intentional with your money and knowing what you have and what you're using it for. One thing um, to really think about when you're trying to be more intentional with your money is to really think about your values. What can you do to make sure that you're spending money, your money in ways that are in sync with your values? So just really maybe try and take some time to really think about what you value most in life. Maybe it's travel with your family. Maybe it's caring for animals. Um, Maybe you enjoy a particular recreational activity like hiking or boating or, I don't know, gardening. Whatever it might be, you probably could use some more money to enjoy those things that you value. Whether or not those activities cost a lot of money, Having your money managed properly frees up time to allow you to do more of those things that you really enjoy. So if you take a look at what you're spending money on, you can see if there's anywhere else you can cut back. And you might find that you're spending money on things that are less of a priority to you. Of course, there's certain things that you have to spend money on, but there's usually some areas we can cut back on even to just allow a little bit of extra funds to go towards those things that are more important to us. While we're kind of um, you know, thinking about what our priorities are and how we're spending our money, it's really important to be clear with ourselves on what are wants versus needs. So of course there's nothing wrong with spending money on wants. Um, you, know, you just don't wanna let it happen too much without putting thought into it. When you're purchasing something that is a want versus a need, just consider what you're giving up. Because as we all know, whenever we spend money on something, it means that we no longer have that money to spend on something else. So when you're spending money intentionally, it means you take the time to consider what you're giving up. It doesn't mean that you don't purchase things just for enjoyment. It just means that you're more thoughtful about those purchases and really making sure that, you know, when you purchase this thing, it will mean that you have to give up something else because now that money's gone on whatever it is you're purchasing. So you wanna really make sure like, is this what I really want? Is this the best use of my money? Is this really going towards what my values are and what my goals are? And is this the best decision for me to make right now? And if the answer is yes, then go ahead and make the purchase. At least you, you know that you're spending your money wisely and you're not just kind of purchasing something you know on a whim that you had no intentions to buy and you maybe might not even remember that you purchased it a week from now and it's just going to sit somewhere because it seemed cute at the time and you know it's really just kind of thinking through how you're using your money another thing that really helps with being more intentional with our money is setting goals 
having specific goals in mind helps you prioritize your spending. So if you really can just sit and take some time to think about what your financial goals currently are, it can really help you um, kind of prioritize your spending and say, well, maybe I don't really need to um, you know, purchase this, uh, I don't know, maybe I don't need to stop for lunch on the road today, I can just eat when I get home because I'd rather use that money towards um, going bowling this weekend or whatever, I don't know, whatever things you might be um, wanting to use your money for or things you might wanna save up for. And if you've already identified your goals, um, maybe just take a little bit of time to review them again because keeping your goals fresh in your mind can help you make better choices when it comes um, to spending your money. It's best to focus on a smaller number of goals at once because if you have too many goals that you're trying to achieve, you're not really going to be able to um, keep that motivation going because it's just too much. You kind of really want to just have a few things that you're really working on and kind of keep them in the back of your mind so that as you're deciding to make purchases or spend your money on various things, you can really consider how does this impact my goal and would I be better off using this money in a different way or putting it towards these other goals that I have. And then again, like I was saying with putting thought into your purchases, you know, so it's not, it's not about not spending money. It's fine to spend money, but it's, it's about spending it on purpose. Just because um, you see something, like I said, that you might like in the moment, it doesn't mean that you are going to really um, value that item or be so grateful that you got it. So buying something because it'll add value to your life that you have a budget for it just feels so much better than buying something on a whim with no budget to cover that cost. So you really want to kind of plan out your purchases the best that you can, or at the very least have a little bit of money for those um, random purchases that you might just decide to, to pick up. Because you don't want to have to, you don't want to make a purchase and then go home and realize you didn't have money set aside for that item, and now you have to kind of scramble to figure out what budget line that expense is going to now be covered by. And, you, you know, because I know a lot of times when you purchase something, a lot of times you'll figure, find out, like, that you maybe it's not as exciting as you thought it was or it wasn't as necessary as you thought it was. Um, I know that a lot of times they say to wait, give, like, a waiting period um, to think it over, maybe at least a day before making a purchase, because that allows you to have some time to think about what you're purchasing. Is it really in line with your goals or your values? Um, is it really going to add value to your life, and is it covered by your budget? And a lot of times you'll find out um, that you don't really necessarily care or want that item all that much. A lot of times I'll put things in my Amazon cart and put them in like the save for later, and more times than not, I end up forgetting about them. So I could have easily just clicked buy now, and then I would have wound up spending that money on something that I definitely could live without and clearly wouldn't really miss because I put it in the save for later and then completely forgot about it. So just kind of give yourself some time to be thoughtful about the purchases that you're going to be making. Also, of course, tracking expenses. Tracking expenses is so important because so often we think we know where our money is going until we actually start tracking it. It's really hard to believe how much those five and ten dollar purchases here and there add up over the course of a month, or even um, a fifty dollar item here or there, or you know two hundred dollars at Target um, for whatever random things you decided to go in and purchase one day that maybe you weren't even planning on purchasing at all. All of those expenses add up, and a lot of times we kind of think of them kind of individually. Oh well, it's only ten dollars. It's only fifty dollars. Um, however much those purchases are at the time we're making it, they seem like they can easily fit into our budget. But when we add them all up and we really track what we're spending and what we're spending it on, we can get such a better picture of where we might be able to cut back a little bit to reallocate that money in another way that's more in line with what our goals and priorities are. Another way that is one of my favorite ways to be intentional with your money is to use sinking funds to save up for irregular expenses. 
So I have a couple of separate episodes on sinking funds that go into a little bit more detail, um, if that's something you're interested in learning more about. But basically a sinking fund is just a way to save up a little bit of money each week or each month for things that happen at irregular times during the year. And by putting a little bit away over the course of time, when those expenses come up, you're prepared to cover the cost. So like say for example, um, one of the examples I always use is like our annual vet visit. So we have two dogs and they go to the vet um, you know, once a year where they get their shots take, you know, they get their shots updated um, and they get like their wellness visit or whatever. And it costs quite a bit, like I don't remember, it's over several, several hundred dollars for both dogs. Um, and I used to just kind of be like, oh no, I'm going to have this bill. And, you know, I wouldn't really ever plan for it. I knew it was coming, but I never really planned for it. But then what I started doing with those types of expenses is putting aside a little bit of money every week. I would take the annual cost and divide it by 52. And I put that portion aside every week. So it's coming out of my weekly budget. I'm not just spending that money on other things during the week, feeling like I have it, and then suddenly getting hit at the end of the year with this large vet bill. I'm saying, no, out of each weekly budget, I have to put this much aside for these various costs. So then when it's time for the vet, there's no stress. You go in, they have their visit, you pay the bill, you have the money set aside, and it makes such a huge difference. So, um, you know, I've built on those sinking funds over time I have so many sinking funds actually, because there's so many different things like that that come up from like Amazon Prime membership. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I I, um, use QuickBooks and like every three years they make you upgrade it. So I started putting money aside for that. Um, Just all these different random things that happen on a periodic basis. Every time one of them hits me and I'm like, oh no, I forgot about that one. Well, I deal with it then, and then starting at that point moving forward, I set up a sinking fund for it. So that whenever those types of costs arise, I have the money set aside, and I'm not having to scramble and try and figure out where I'm gonna get this money from now. So just try and think of maybe um, some things, if you already use sinking funds, maybe there's something else you could set one up for that you haven't um, really thought about before that you might need some money for coming up that's not like a regular weekly or monthly expense. And then uh, my last um, tip for being more intentional with your money and is, you know, saving up for things when you can. So, you know, maybe you decided you'd like to take your family out to dinner once in a while, but it's not in your budget. You know, you you just don't have a, a budget for being able to go out to dinner and you don't really see where you can fit that in. So when you try and just save up a little bit each week here and there, when you have money available before you know it you'll have money saved up for some of these other little things or these like little kind of like extra things that you want to do you can even do as little as like five dollars a week or ten dollars a week whatever you can find in your budget you know sometimes we end up with a little extra cash for whatever reason maybe a budget line item came in less than we expected or maybe you got a little bonus at work or maybe had some overtime however you might end up with a little extra cash by having things that you're working to save up for, even if they're just little things like going out to dinner or going on a day trip or something like that, it allows you to be more intentional with those extra bits of money because you know, oh, I'm saving up for these things. I got this extra money. I'm going to put it towards that instead of just kind of letting it get spent on whatever random things you wind up purchasing. Because when you save up for stuff, it's such a different feeling spending that money on something you specifically saved up for rather than just going out and doing it and then having to recoup from it later. So depending on where you're currently at, I know a lot of this can probably sound a bit overwhelming um, to put it all together and really getting a good hold of where your money goes, but you only have to start small. You know, pick one thing to focus on and start with that and then, you know, build over time. I would suggest starting with tracking your expenses if you're not already um, doing that as a habit because that's such an important piece to really get a good understanding of where your money is going. And then, um, you know, once you kind of see where your expenses are, you can start to analyze and say, okay, well, we're spending this much on cable. Do we really ever watch cable? Can we cut that expense? Okay, great. That saves us a hundred bucks a month right there. Um, you know, you, you can really see where your money's going. Some of those things aren't going to be able to, to change and some of them will. 
So just by looking at those expenses and really starting to track them, you can really start to be more intentional with how you're spending your money. So just work at it a little bit at a time and it'll get easier and easier no matter where you're at. You can always put a little bit more um, effort in and it will make a big difference. So that's all I have to talk about today about managing your money um, intentionally. Uh, don't, I hopefully, hopefully this was a little bit helpful to you. Um, don't forget, you can email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. You can find my blog post for each episode on my website at lolasfrugallife.com. And you can also join our private listeners group on facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see you're listening. Also, if you could please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, that would be really helpful to me. That's what helps get the show um, boosted up higher in search results when people are looking to listen to something like this. There's also a link in the episode details to financially support the podcast if that's something you're interested in. So thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a really awesome day. Are you in the mood to learn something new? Well, Skillshare is now offering one month free of Skillshare Premium. Unlock a passion, side hustle, or new professional skill with thousands of classes in design, business, and more. Start your one month free trial now by using the link within the podcast notes for this episode. There's no commitment and you can cancel at any time. So why not go ahead and learn a new skill that you have always wanted to have?